and we're ready to go now. The light is on for the running of the Fernhill Mile. Set for action. Racing now. Rawtime was last out with Tenbury Wells. Now, Kilcare Beach Girl jumps sharply, so did Just Party has ridden for speed. Pretty handy El Costello and Power of Opals in that leading division, together with Miss Bustlinger striding forward. Then came Rast just off the speed. The 300 caught pretty deep as Rawtime goes up the fence with broadsiding. Back second last to Kami Star and Tenbury Wells last of all. Just Party's finally going to get the front on his own and extends to lead by a length and a half. El Costello goes to second from Kilcare Beach Girl. Then came Miss Bustlinger. Rasp has caught three wide now out there in the white cap. Further back to Raw Time. Broad, broad sightings back in the field. One off from Powers of Opal. Wide out the 300. And the last two are Kami Star on the outside of Tenbury Wells. They've got 800 metres to run. Just party in front. By length and El Costello. Kilcare Beach Girl on the fence third. Followed by Miss Bustlinger well position. Rasp is doing a bit tough wide out. Then came Raw Time from Broad Siding in the middle of the ruck. Powers of Opal moving up together with the 300. So the favourites back in the field and a bit cluttered up at this point. Just Party preparing to turn for home in front from El Costello under pressure. Then Miss Bustling. at Rasp is out four wide. Broadsiding still in a pocket. 3.50 to go. Just Party beating off El Costello. Then Miss Bustlinger. Now Broadsiding's looking to shove into the clear. The stable mate Rasp tried to keep it in unsuccessfully. 200 to go. Just Party. Two lengths clear. Broadsiding giving chase now. Just Party in front. But here it comes, broadsiding, powering to the post, and broadsiding pulls away. Boy, El Costello showed plenty of fight, kicked on for second in front of Just Party. Uh, then came Rasp together with Miss Bustlinger, further back to Kilcare Beach Girl, followed by Kami Star, Powers of Opal, Tenbury Wells, and the 300 was last in. Well, broadsiding appreciated getting to the mile today, James. Yeah, he certainly did. He's... Uh... He's a very interesting colt. Look, he's a two darn hot colt. That's uh, two darn hot's first stakes winner in Australia today. And he did it with a bit of conviction today, which is good to see. Amazing, you know, I remember a few years ago standing on Warren Hill, seeing two darn hot in training with John Gosden himself. And, uh, you know, you get a part of the bloodstock and, uh, and, it's, and it's great to have that also on the roster at, uh, at Dali in Australia. And it's, a, it's a pretty promising start he's made with his first season crop. But, uh, but as for this horse, uh, he had absolutely no trouble eating up the mile. Um, and uh, it should be no surprise to us. He's so nicely bred. Tudan Hobby himself won a Sussex stake, stakes at three. So, um, yeah, I think this horse has got every, everything that would be needed to see a horse step up and back up in the Champagne stakes next week. But that'll be up to us just to see how his health is and, uh, and whether we're happy to proceed with that and put him under that pressure. But I'm sure he gave James McDonald a pretty good feel this afternoon. Well, this morning. <laughs> Congratulations, J Mac. I know you haven't been on the horse before, but he looks like he's starting to really put it together. He is, yeah. That's an improving two year old, isn't it? He'll back up really well in a week's time. Um, real nuggety type of horse. The stronger the race, the better he'll go, and he's ticked that mile box. He's a horse on the rise, so he's, he's coming in at the right time. He quickened well once he got a clear run? Yeah, he did. He, 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 um, he used good acceleration, but I think that race will even bring him on anymore. Well done. Been flying in his work, and there's the light. We're ready to go. Racing now. Lovely line out of the gates. Butch Cassidy jumped uh, particularly well. The favourite raises there. Panic and Kaisad is going to use the rails to try and hold them all out. So it's a good go for the front. Kaisad the fence from Butch Cassidy striding up on the outside of Panic. He's going to settle in third now, followed by Lively Rhythm of Love. A gap of two or three lengths further back then to Waverley. It goes up the inside of Midnight Opal in the early part. Then raises about midfield, two off to Cadavar from Kandinsky Abstract. Suspect goes up the fence from He-Man. Port Lockroy is back in the field. Robrick in the gold jacket is third last. Port Lockroy on the fence. And Mr Kipchoe. Yogi sees them all. 700 metres to go. Butch Cassidy in front rolling by three quarters to panic. Kaizad third on the inside of Rhythm of Love. They're followed for the back by Midnight Opal on the outside of Lively. Then came Razor's Kandinsky Abstract as they race for the home straight now. And Butch Cassidy in front from panic. Rhythm of Love pulling out. Then Kaizad, Midnight Opal. Razor's is coming down the middle part of the track. Butch Cassidy being pressed by panic. Panic and Butch Cassidy. Rhythm of Love third. Followed by 
by Razors is grinding away, then Midnight Opal, a gap to Port Lockroy. It's Panic and Butch Cassidy. Razors lifting, so is Rhythm of Love. Panic just in front. Panic! Panic got there narrowly from either Razors or Rhythm of Love and a blanket finish. Then Butch Cassidy lively. Port Lockroy warming up late together with Rob Rick and Mr. Kip Chogi. He looks, he wants another lap. Further back to He Man. Then Cardivar from Kandinsky Abstract, Kaisad, Suspect, and Waverley. Continue on this wonderful carnival. Yeah, it's been a, been amazing. Um, you know, just saying for a relatively small team to be competing at this level and, and, and getting a few winners, it's it's a big thrill and a huge credit to the whole team. They're, they're a great bunch of staff. They were coming at you, but there was no panic? No, I was getting a little bit anxious that last bit. Um, maybe Tommy made the suggestion we put a set of winkers on him earlier in the week because he... He's ridden him a bit, and he was a little bit wayward at Wyong when he got in front the other day, so credit to Tommy with the, with the gear change. But um, I'd love to eventually see this horse ridden with a bit of cover because I see what he can do at home when he works off the back of another horse. It's, um, he's a nice sort of horse, so, yeah, I think there's, there's more in him. Any immediate plans? No, I'll see how he pulls up. Um, you know, maybe the Hawkesbury Guineas is, is an option in two weeks' time or maybe something in Queensland. We'll just get through today and have a bit of a think. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Firstly, Tommy, did you panic? No, <laughs> I didn't. Um, I panicked when I was still in front of the 100. I tell you, I, I didn't. I expected him to run top three today, but he's always been a, an immature type, and he's still learning his craft. Hence, why the, the winkers went on today. And I thought he was always going to make it up to this grade. I just didn't think it'd be so early with what he's been doing at home. But um, great training performance by the team, and they've given him that win to boost his confidence first up, and he's definitely gone on with it now combination you and Michael are going well yeah we are going well the only blimp in our record was me getting off Manal and that was my fault so um anyway apart from that and he reminds me of it every day but uh, it's still nice to get a few winners from him. Right. we are just about set for the provincial midway final turned on. There they go. They're up and racing now. And Will Adow missed it. One of the speed runners. Bouncing brilliantly. Terra Mata, Shadows of Love right there as well. And Straight Acer was away nicely. Convincibility goes forward. Settling fully into stride. It's Shadows of Love. Terra Mata, the joint leaders with Convincibility. Little Beginnings moving up. Will Adow after missing the start. Musters. Osbred Flirt lands in a good spot just behind the speed. Then Straight Acer. Wallinga free for the outside. Short Shorts has got back after also being tardy. The inside of Wallinga Beast. Victory Lane is wide out, followed by Baltic Coast. Tarby Times found the rails from his wide drawer. Inside Territory Express, and the last one was Ruby Flyer coming up to the turn. And Convincibility, 600 metres to go, leads in the final. One length, Shadows of Love. Will A down the outside, followed by Little Beginnings. Then Terra Mata, Osbred Flirt about to peel. Wider than was Wallinga Freefall. Straight Acer, Territory Express, Tarby Time, both well back early in the straight. Little Beginnings pushing out. The in Inside, Shadows of Love boxes on strongly. Osbred Flirt running home. Terra Mata's up the inside. Then Wallinga free fall. And Wallinga Beast Territory Express gets through near the inside. And here he comes. Straight Acer, Shadows of Love joined by Territory Express. This will be an emotional win. Paul Nisiforo's done it with Territory Express. Brilliant ride, Zach Lloyd. He knocks off Straight Acer. Shadows of Love photo for fourth. Wallinga free fall. Tarvi time. Wallinga Beast, Osbred Flirt. Then Ruby Flyer will. Willa Dow, followed by the next home, Short Shorts, Baltic Coast, Little Beginnings, Convincibility and Terra Martyrs run near last. One more victory lane at the end. You've been telling everyone who would listen yeah. that this horse would win today. Yeah, I've been so exactly. confident right from uh, weeks ago and everything's gone well. The whole preparation's been perfect, so I can't complain. What gave you so much confidence about him? just the way he moves he's such a nice horse so look out cox plate here we come a little birdie told me you were hoping to bypass this race and get into the doncaster that's, that's how much that's, that's, how, that's how much faith you had yeah. that's how much confidence i had in the horse yes, yes. i honestly believe he would have been in the finish in the doncaster so he's a lovely horse is this your greatest moment in in racing at as a moment, trainer yeah at the moment it is yes well, you think there's more to, Definitely there's better, to come. better wins in store? Especially with him. The yeah. 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 <laughs> You've been around a while, Paul. I've been around a long time, but I've never had a horse as good as this bloke. 
including a, a stint here with Bart Cummings years yeah, ago. Yeah, with Bart, uh, it was here. I learned a lot from him, yeah. which was good. And a genius in the territory called Len Cant, yes. absolute genius. And I spent five years with him. And that's where you learnt the, the early part of your trade exactly. in the NT. Yep, spot on. With a bloke from Catherine. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, I can't thank him enough, you know, for what he's taught me. I only know what he's forgotten. Yeah. But he's also the Theo Green of the Territory. All the top apprentices in the Territory, he's brought them on. So good credit to him. Well done. Hey, Mary, and he's, one by, oh my God. he's handling this very well. Yeah, he's done really well. But <laughs> he couldn't talk to Zach, he was so emotional. Yeah, really? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You see them a bit more calm yeah. now. Yeah, no, yeah. it's all over and done with. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I'm happy now. Yeah. So I've done my job. <laughs> Zach's done his, so yeah. on to the next one now. And Chrissy, and Chrissy Duffy has done a hell of a lot of work with this horse. She is the most incredible track rider and so devoted. And any employer that actually gets her to work for him is a lucky man. Stay healthy. Thank you. Well very done. Much. Thank you. Well done, Zach. This horse is fastly becoming one of your favourites. Yeah, most definitely. Just the association with, with Paul and Mary Ann, it's um, very special to get the, the job done today. It's a good ride. It worked. It panned out. That wasn't the... Mary Ann just gave me one instruction. She said, please just get him to the outside. And he's a very hard horse to get to the outside because he, he jumps so... It's just slowly and there's horses all around you. So you're sort of left with no option but to go through them. But he's got such a good turn of foot. He, he makes runs and thankfully we've got the brakes today. Starter about to uh, hit the button. 1,200 metres and the gates are back now. They're off and racing. And two darn Lizzie jump well. So did Lady Zodiac wide out. Quickly on the scene, Divine Force and drifting, whipping through. Then Diddle Dumpling from Anisa. And the favourite Lady of Camelot parks behind in a three-wire position. Clear from Erno's Cube. Amina going up the fence on the inside of more territories. A couple further back to Empress of Japan. We fly, fly, or more Zillow. A length, uh, Castagna got on heels and Nymphadora's last of all. So Drifting's gone up the fence, uh, racing to another lead from the Ruffy Lady Zodiac, followed then by Divine Force Diddle Dumpling back on the inside of Two Darn Lizzie, further back to Anisa. Lady of Camelot at about six coming to the turn, more territories ridden up the fence, and then came Erno's Cube as they come around the corner. It's Drifting and Lady Zodiac, Diddle Dumpling being pushed on, and uh, Divine Force got a nasty check there. Anisa's going to dart back towards the inside, and Lady of Camelot down the outside, Drifting. Anisa's rattling home on the inside and now Lady of Camelot, she's driving Anisa the inside, Lady of Camelot Anisa took the shortcut and Anisa beats Lady of Camelot camera third, Uno's cube just from El Morzillo, a cracking runner then Diddle Dumpling from more territories, two down Lizzie and Amina closing off at the end, then Fly Fly wide out, further back to Drifting, Divine Force, Nymphadora and a gap back to Lady Zodiac and Empress of Japan Well done Pete, what a what a great campaign she's had. She's been uh, terrific. Uh, she's not a big filly. She's unbelievably resilient. And uh, her constitution and the way she handles her racing, um, you know, it's been phenomenal. I, I don't think I've trained a tougher two-year-old. Um, she had, didn't have a lot of luck in the slipper. Arguably, you can make a case for her and probably six others that she could have won. And we probably brought ourselves undone in the Blue Diamond, rode her a bit close, but a lovely ride by Damien today. And... Uh, I think uh, just reward for effort. Yep, and a spell now and look forward to a three-year-old? Yeah, hope so. You know, uh, she's a two-year-old. She's a natural two-year-old. She's not going to lose her ability. Um, can she improve? That's arguable. Uh, you've got to hope the immature ones don't catch up and overtake you. That's that's the key to it. I'm not a believer in two-year-olds losing form. The immature ones catch mature up. and go past you. So she's very professional and that'll take her a long way going forward. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Frosty. Frosty. There's not a lot of her. It's not a lot to look at, but gee, she's got a motor. Yeah, hit the nail on the head. She's just a little little rocket. Uh, she must have a good constitution because she's just held her form so good throughout the prep. Um, and she's so versatile. The barrier was a big help? Absolutely. Uh, obviously, I had to concede too much ground from a poor barrier and a slipper. And today, just to be able to use her a bit early, then switch her off uh, was, was the key. Well done. And we're locked and loaded and ready to go for the Arrowfield Sprint. 
1,200 meters. They're set. Osmosis is the favourite and they're racing and Osmosis jumped out cleanly. Uh, the instructor ridden for tremendous speed. The novelist there, Red Resistance as well, wide out. Now Osmosis striding up on the inside of right. Koki handy and then came Libertad. Arkansas Kid as Red Resistance drifts back through the field. Schwartz about midfield improving from heads then Jolly Star Corniche. Mumbai Muse last of all. The instructor's working hard trying to get across from the stable mate, the novelist. And now the pair goes stride for stride. Rakoki out deep goes to third. Schwartz improving on the inside of Osmosis. A length and a half then to Libertad from Arkansas Kid. Red Resistance on a wide path. Jolly Star well back as they come around the turn. The novelist just hanging a little bit from the instructor the outside. Then came Schwartz who's eyeing off an inside run but might run out of room. Osmosis given the cue. Libertad given the cue down the outside. Osmosis takes the lead now. A narrow leader. Jolly Star slicing through the pack from Libertad and Hedge with the last shot of them. Jolly Star taken to the front. Hedge the outside is coming hard. Jolly Star and Hedge. Jolly Star and Hedge. They hit it. Jolly Star a nose to Hedge. Photo for third as well. Libertad, Corniche and Arkansas Kid. Then came Swartz. Osmosis ran out of puff. Then came Red Resistance from Mumbai Muse, the instructor. And a gap back to the novelist and right Kaki. Photo finish. Here he is, Chris Waller. Well done. What a filly she is. Yeah, she's a star. And, um, yeah, she did it as a three-year-old, the late three-year-old part of the of um, the spring and won a group one race, and she's come back and probably gone to a new level, um, racing quicker over shorter and um, beating the boys. She just had a little bone chip surgery in between? Very minor. We didn't even know it was there. We just took precautionary x-rays and found it, so... Um, could have easily raced on, but get it out, and then she's got a career to fill without, fulfil without any problems to worry about. Where's her limit? I'm not sure. <laughs> pretty scary, really. It's pretty, it's pretty. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's good to good to think about. Good to dream. But um, yeah, I think yeah, looking after her now, you'll see some great things as for you. A race like that's almost a grand final, but she's only first up. Yeah, she is. I'm not, not sure if we'll push too far though. Um, yeah, because otherwise you get on the wrong leg and you're not properly prepared for the sprint. Yeah, well done. Thanks. Congratulations, Jamie. Nice little pickup. Love those pickups. Um, normally you get either suspended or you win, so I'm, I'm happy it went my way. It was a good win. <laughs> really good win. Look, obviously she um, would be better over further, I thought, but she feels like a sprinter every day of the week after that. She's really, really got a sharp turn of foot. I was about to say, she had a sharp turn of foot. It looked like she was going to have no luck at the top of the straight, but once she got the run, she really charged through. Yeah, and she um, she over-raced um, a lot being first up, and if she got beaten, it wasn't going to be her fault, so she's done it both ends today. Well done. Thank you. They're all loaded, and the light is on for the Star Australian Oaks. 2,400 metres ahead of them. Racing now. The favourite orchestral was one of the last out with Autumn Angel and Zardozzi. All the, the popular ones a bit tardy and Bush Girl bounded out of the gates in front. Showing a bit of speed there is Quintessa towards the inside and dances with who's a starting to muster. Tutar Levita is going into a prominent position as well. Followed by True Ferry on the inside of orchestral is up running fifth now. Two lengths further back to Basilina. A similar margin to Autumn Angel from Piplup and Zardozzi is going to settle at the tail of the field and about 10 lengths off the leader, which is one of the roughies, Bush Girl, out by a length and a half. Dances with who's second, Quintessa gets a good spot third. Two lengths away to Tutard Levita, followed by True Ferry, and the raging favourite orchestral is shooting for six consecutive wins today, is right on the back of Tutard Levita. Two lengths then to Basilina, followed by Autumn Angel, who snookered on the rails, a length to Piplup, and Zardozzi is last of all. So about a dozen lengths covers the field now, and it's Bush Girl at the the 1400 metres by two lengths. In second position, the Ruffy dances with Hoos. So big odds, the first two, Quintessa into a clear third. Several lengths further back to True Ferry on the inside at Tutar Levita. So the pace has been certainly genuine enough. There's been no need for any moves there at the 1200 metres. Orchestral's back fifth last from Autumn Angel. Then came Basilina Zardozzi slightly improving. And now Piplup is the last one. So they race to the side of the course now at the 1000. 
1,000 metres and Bush Girl ensuring a good tempo. Out by three lengths on Dances with Who's. Quintessa third. Then Tuta Levita on the outside of True Ferry. Orchestral still travelling sweetly in the second half of the field. Just waiting to be given her cue. A gap further back to Autumn Angel is right back on the inside of Basilina. Then Zardozzi and Piplup last of all. The margin between top end to tail extends now. Bush Girl three lengths clear. Approaching the corner. Bush Girl from Dances with Who's. Quintessa. Tuta Levita gets going and Orchestral pulls right to the outside. Five off the lead. Bush Girl's given a good sight up front. She's coming back to them quickly and now Orchestral with Quintessa winding up. Zardozzi with a good run wide out and Autumn Angels coming off heels. Orchestral got to the front at the 200. Under siege from Zardozzi and Autumn Angel through the middle. Zardozzi and Autumn Angel. Orchestral needs to lift. Autumn Angel getting the upper hand and Autumn Angel won the Australian Oaks beating Zardozzi and Orchestral. Quintessa fourth followed by Tuta Levita. A gap back in the field to Basilina from Bush Girl. True Ferry Piplup and dances with Wolves. Well done, Pete. Well, it ended up a different pathway, but you got the result. Yeah, well, uh, Ray Thomas just said to me it wasn't ideal missing the vinery, but the, the way she thrived this week and come off the, the back up, uh, it, it, I was sort of really taken back. Um, mm. So much so that when... Uh, um, who wrote it again? Mark, Mark Zara. <laughs> <laughs> when Mark got on her, I suggested I was worried that I mightn't have done enough with her uh, this week, but she's thrived all week, and uh, big special thanks to all my team at home. Special thanks to Anthony Cummings and his team who look after us and house us here at Randwick as well, and, and the Randwick track staff. Um, what a phenomenal job they've done the last couple of weeks under trying circumstances. Last Saturday was phenomenal, and to back it up with this track today, uh, congratulations to Michael Wood and his team here. That's phenomenal effort. Your 59th career group one, but that Catherine Coleman, she's on her way now, two in a week. Yes, uh, she'll think it's uh, bloody easy this, won't she? But uh, no, Catherine, Jeff O'Connor, Will Holmes and all the team at home and uh, Sarah and my girls, it's a big team effort and uh, thanks to everyone, wonderful job and great for Wiley who's been a tremendous stable supporter and, and the ownership group that backed me when I withdrew her from the VRC Oaks uh, when she was probably the favourite. Uh, to wait for this one, so it's great to be rewarded for that and nice to get it right once in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Mark. Plenty of reasons to drink the real night tonight, mate. <laughs> Absolutely, I've got to get some water first, can't speak. <laughs> Were you ever concerned when you are back that, well, second last? Look, as a jockey, you'd know, I wanted to be behind um, James or at least Basilina. The, the line I was in was the 201 pot, but to be in that spot, I would have had to restrict it the whole way, so I thought... I'm just going to have to pinch two lengths and worry about, you know, 600 when it comes rather than fighter the whole way. And I was just, I knew I'd be going good the whole way and I was able to just ease Vaseline out the way and um, get in the clear. And like I say, it was a great feeling of three of us coming together, great for the sport and I was the strongest. There's the light now. Here we go, the Sydney Cup. Stand by. And they're off and racing. Oh, one's flopped out of the gates. A clear last was a maid. A maid is 10 lengths out the back and Major Bill, last year's derby winner, jumped brilliantly. Carla pour away nicely in second and Ma Rajan goes forward out deep on the outside of Manzois. Then came Serpentine, who's a few lengths off the lead in the early part and is going between runners. Stockman, it's outside. Circle of Fire's firing up a little bit in the early stages, followed by Glentane, is buried down on the rails. Ash run in the middle of the ruck. They're followed further back by Loft down on the fence. Uh, further back in the field, then to Atha Baskin who's on a three wide par from So Dazzling then came Salino, mostly cloudy a mate's recovered after the tardy start and has put military mission now back in last position rolling down towards the post, it's Major Beale and Stockman and the pace is alright here Major Beale from Stockman we don't often see Stockman eyeballing a front runner, he's a half length away with one lap to go, this dual New Zealand Cup winner over two miles, Mahrajan in a very handy third, in advance of Man 
Van Zoyce, and then came Carla Poor fifth. Now the favourite circle of fires on a three-wide path has been keen in the early stages, so Andrea Razzini allows the favourite to slide forward circle of fire. Serpentine getting close to heels, one off the fence. Athabaskan in the dark blue cap the outside. They're followed by Loft on the inside of Ash Runner. Further back to Salino from So Dazzling. Our third last is mostly cloudy from a maid. And last of all is Military Mission. So it's Major Bills shaking off Stockman now. Going to the mile mark. And Major Bills got the lead on his own now. By two and a half to Stockman. Maharaj on into a clear third as they work down the back of the course. Now Circular Fire puts his head into fourth position on the outside of Man's Oyst and Carla Poor. Now further back then to Athabaskan who's on a wider path gradually improving. They're followed further back to Glen Tanius is down towards the inside running rail and the inside is Serpentine. Two lengths further back to Loft on the inside of Ash Runner. Then came Selena who won the Sydney Cup here three years ago. It's parked down on the inside is So Dazzling. Then mostly Cloudy from a maid and Military Mission is still last of all. The Sydney Cup field thundered away the race started and it's Major Bill in front by three quarters to Stockman followed by Circle of Fire edging into a clear third but in a three wide position. Then Manzois Maharaj and in between runners Athabaskan three wide with a bit of cover further back to Carla Poor buried down on the inside of Serpentine. Further back to Ash Run. Now Rachel King starting a runner mostly cloudy up wide of the 600 metres. Loft is going between runners as they come up to the home turn now. Major Bill in front by length and a half. Manzois travels up nicely on the inside. Circle of fire looping. Athabaskan's chiming in. Uh, further back to Serpentine. Ash Run. Mostly cloudy down the outside. It's Circle of Fire tackled by Athabaskan. A length off to Serpentine. Circle of Fire. Ath Carla Poor is running on on the inside, but Circle of Fire with a strong kick. A hundred out. Circle of Fire beating off Athabaskan. And Circle of Fire for Andre Adzetti takes out the Sydney Cup. Won it by two and a half to Athabaskan. Photo third, probably Carla Poor in front of Serpentine. A gap back to Salino, mostly clouding. A good gap then to Ash Runner, followed by Maiders. Beat uh, about half the field home at the end from Loft. So Dazzling, then Stockman, Glentanius, Military Mission, Major Bill. All got a big stitch, so did Man's Oise. Maharaj didn't stay the trip today. Congratulations. This must mean a lot. It must be emotional because you know this is all for Stefano. It is. Uh, it, it's definitely for him. And everybody's been, been going through a tough time. You know, started from obviously his family, which we're very close to. And, uh, and I, I just said earlier, how amazing is for them to see them here, considering it wouldn't have been an easy decision for them to come racing today. It shows how tough they are, and they understand that uh, unfortunately Stefano left us to do what he wanted to do, doing what he loved doing, and he was doing what he was good at. How well did you know him? I knew him quite well. Um, you know, we, we spent a lot of time together in Newmarket, and uh, I kept touching him very closely when he moved to Australia. I thought it was a great idea for him to come here to try his luck. Unfortunately, it didn't last very long, but uh, we're all very lucky to have met someone like Stefano. So you had no hesitation when they offered you the ride? No, well, no, it's, you know, when, when Kerema gives you a ring, you know, you, you're pretty certain he, he's got a good one. And uh, I must thank the Hong Kong Jockey Club for allowing me to be here today, and, uh, and I'm back there tomorrow, so. What about, what were your thoughts when you were three wide? Yeah, I didn't like it, I didn't like it. The, the, the plan was um, to get into a nice rhythm with a bit of cover, because he, he, he raced a little bit keen the last day, so we, we wanted to get him in behind something. And I jumped quite nicely, and probably a little better than I thought he would. And uh, I just, we had no plan really, whenever he landed, but I did a little bit of cover. I tried my luck early on in the races to get him behind something. And I couldn't, so I went forward again and I tried to get in just before this bend and that didn't work either. So it, didn't, it was hard work for me and when I turned into the stray, he was travelling very strongly. But he did it the hard way, so I didn't know what, what I had left in the tank. But to be fair to the horse, he, he dug deep when the second horse came to him and the further he went, the better he was. Great. Let's sit back and enjoy 
the Queen Elizabeth worth $5 million, live from Sydney's Royal Ramwick. There's Sestina, the raging favourite. Racing now, and Pride of Jenny jump brilliantly towards the inside. Pride of Jenny in front, Mr. Brightside being sent forward on the outside. And Plaster Carousel goes straight to third. Then came Zarek, followed by Kovali, Kachaya Wolf. Now Buckaroo settles back in the field in front of the favourite Via Sestina, and the nine-year-old Cascadians last of all. So Pride of Jenny, a long leader in the early part. About four or five lengths in front, Mr. Brightside went forward from the outside, and he's happy to sit in a long slipstream of Pride of Jenny. She's already off and gone at the 1400 metres. She opens up by eight lengths. Mr Brightside wants to sit back and conserve his energy in second. Three lengths away Plaster Carousel. Followed then by Zarek. Further back to Kovalik and then the lone three-year-old Chaya Wolf. Via Sestina, the short price favourite, is third last from Buckaroo and Cascadian impossibly his last day of racing is last of all. Well Pride of Jenny we expected her to lead by a long way but seriously 30 lengths this is unbelievable pride of jenny with sustained speed going to the 800 meters i've never seen a horse this far in front in a group one pride of jenny the best part of 25 lengths clear mr brightside willow just wants to sit back for the time being then plaster carousel the outside further back to zarek kovalika followed by chaya wolf via sustina buckaroo and cascadians last of all she's still this is unbelievable pride of jenny about 30 lengths in front in the Queen Elizabeth Stakes. She keeps going, coming up the rise. At the moment, Mr Brightside is being challenged by Kovalika, and then came Buckaroo uh, via Sestina. She's winding up, she's getting to second, but Pride of Jenny at the 200. My goodness, 15 in front. Declan Bates goes for the whip, riding a right out. There's no need. This is a demolition job. Pride of Jenny in the Queen Elizabeth Stakes. My, oh, my. Via Sestina second, Mr. Brightside third, Cascadian fourth, then Kovalika, Buckaroo, Plaster Carousel, Chaya Wolf, and uh, Zarek, the ride of the century, Declan Bates. And uh, to Deck and the team, Tony Lynn, unbelievable. Um, the Deck to have the Norries to do that. Oh, God. It was just chase, chase, chase. He knew he was going to lead, but <laughs> by 40? In a group one. Oh, group one. Like, not just any group one. That's, oh. Anyway, that, yeah, I don't think it'll get it any better than that. Could that be one of your that most is. emotional wins? Well, that, that is. That's, that's the biggest win I've ever seen, let alone had anything to do with. Well done. Thank you. Seven, eight, one and two. Ronnie? Ronnie? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We knew it was all over at the half mile, honestly. Um, I just, there's no words to describe that. Yeah, you could blame the jockeys for not chasing, yeah, but they weren't quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't quicken, they couldn't chase her. And I thought she went for home too early. And then it got worse and uglier and uglier, uglier for the opposition there. And no respect, seven dollars. We're all mugs now. We are all mugs. We all read the play, but didn't capitalise on it. That was absolutely amazing, Ronnie. Like I've never seen anything like that on a race course ever. I'd like to see what the biggest margin was where she had them stretched out. Um, she was obviously getting a little bit weary the last sort of 50 metres, but what a ride, Declan Bates. Take a bow. Tony, you're going you're gonna to lead her in. Yes, mate. What do you think of that? Um, it is unbelievable. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, I'm just... Um, I, I've got no words. I have no words for what she just did. It's incredible. I mean, what a horse. Unbelievable. Um, I've got nothing else to say, but really. She's but she's never led by that before. No, but... Uh, Hold on, Tony. But um, you should have seen how she looked. Today, she looked the best, better than she did at the All-Star, and I couldn't believe it. Um... Kieran Martha, what he's done to her is unbelievable. I couldn't, I can't explain it, how he's done it, but he's done a fantastic job. Go and lead her in. Congratulations, Declan. Have you ever ridden like that before or ever seen anything like that before? No, I don't think many people have, to be honest. And, yeah, it was today, I think, you know, any time I've ride her, I've felt we've always been in, I got her into a nice rhythm, I was quite happy with today. 
I was never happy. I just felt she had, she she was doing it her way today, and look, she knows best, I think. We haven't seen her for a long time here in Sydney, but she seemed to have a real spring and a step in the yard today. She did. I got up on her, and I was glad when I first got on her that she had a big spring in her step because. Obviously the concern is that she might be starting to get a bit to the end of her prep, but when she was up and bouncing, initially I was very happy. I wasn't too happy when I can her down to the top of the straight. and She tipped you off? Went to come back and I think maybe it's where her stables must be because she decided, now nah, I'm going this way. And she went one way, I went, I went the other and luckily I held on to her and hopped back aboard and uh, the rest is history. Did you realise you were that far in front? I, I thought it have to be because I knew we were smoking along. So I, I, I knew it have to be. Um, you, can, you can never really hear them coming, but... Um, I was half afraid to have a look. I just turned in and kept my eyes on that winning post and kept her running towards it. That's one for the history books, that one, mate. Well done. Thank you. Ready for the queen of the turf. Tissue's second favourite. Connections to be glad they scratched from the Queen Elizabeth. Racing now. And Arctic Glamour was last out and Tropical Squall as usual bounded out of the gates and is going to lead for fun. Samana strides up on the outside going to second from Zoo Gotcha. Now White Adults most being sent forward in advance of Macarena who's three horses wide in the early part. They're followed by Campion S route deep. More secrets the rails and a tissue is pushing right between runners in the early stages. They're followed then by Arctic Glamour has gone down to the rails from Eternal Flame. Ruthless Dame out deep. Further back to Barbie's Fox, Alencia, three wide in the white cap on the outside of Renaissance Woman and Madame Pomery's last of all so Tropical Squall in front by a half to Osmo, Zugotcha gets to third in the leader's back position and a half the outside to Macarena, two off to More Secret, Samana a bit keen the other, then Campion Nessa on a three wide path from Arctic Glamour at Tissue between them, so Tissue's about six lengths away from the favourite in the run, further back to Ruthless Dame, Barbie's Fox, Eternal Flame Alencia out wide and well back in the field, Renaissance Woman and Madame Pomery. Tropical Squall looking for another Group 1. Tropical Squall leads around the corner from the stable made Osmos. The favourite Zoo gotcha plonked in third and looking to take a run on the inside as Macarena pulls out. Tropical Squall up the rise a narrow leader. Zoo gotcha's rallying the inside, then Macarena further back to Osmos. Samana inside the 150. Zoo gotcha joined Tropical Squall. Macarena is still there. Zoo gotcha got to a narrow lead from Macarena. A big run late by a tissue, it's Zoo Gotcha in front from a tissue, wide apart, a tissue lunge, Zoo Gotcha trying to cling on, photo finish Zoo Gotcha and a tissue then Macarena and Samana from Campionessa, further back to Eternal Flame, Ruthless Dame, more secrets from Tropical Squall Osmos was next from Barbie's Fox, Alencia, then came Arctic Glamour from Madame Pomery and Renaissance Woman was one of the last to finish Here he is Chris Waller, congratulations a flight, a Coolmore, a queen of the turf for this girl. Yeah, she's, we've given her a decent break after she didn't come up in the spring and and put her in the right races and she's just gone bang, bang, bang. So, yeah, she's a tough, tough mare. What were you thinking down the straight? Did you have eyes on a tissue at all? What, what were you I'm watching? I was thinking about the last race. <laughs> <laughs> you could, haven't got over it yet? No, full credit to Pride of Jenny, but it was just terrible to watch. But, um, look, Pride of Jenny's a superstar. But getting back Terrible to, for you. Oh, yeah, it was unbelievable. But, um, yeah, it was great for Kieran. He's done a great job with his team, and she's a super horse. So back to more important things. <laughs> um, yeah, she's a gotcha. She's done a great job with, as I said, we've given her a decent break. After she didn't come up in the spring, we didn't panic, and we've allowed her to be a racehorse. And the tissue, she's tough. Um, another stride. Gee, it might have been different celebrations. But, hey, it is... 1600 metres, all the jockeys are aware of it, you get there too late, like we saw in the last race, there's no <laughs> celebrating. But just go but just go back to that race, how do you ride against that? No, what it's Declan very hard, did? No, very hard. Um, yeah, the race just lacked a second and a third tempo horse, and you can't blame Craig, um, because um, it's not the right thing to do, so he, he did his job, he wasn't worried about what was behind him, he was just riding to finish the race, and... Our boys were all stacked up behind and basically at the at the um, at the crossroads, waiting for the light to turn green. But just, that's racing. It's the beauty of racing. There's no one that dominates. 
year in year out. It's a it's a it's a very open field and it's competitive racing when you've got tactical jockeys. Mm. Well, it certainly brought a spark to the championships, no doubt about it. It sure did, it sure did. And hopefully there's a rematch in the spring. Yeah, yeah. congratulations on 161 Group 1s. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Catching you. <laughs> yeah, you said, I said to you the other day, you're fast approaching 100, you're now 94. You're yeah, getting up there, especially one a weekend helps, doesn't it? But I'm uh, very proud of this mare. She, she's just an absolute ripper, so... Look, we all go, barriers win races, let's be fair, because she's drawn beautiful mar marbles all the way through and she's had the beautiful run, but she's allowed herself to do it. She, she executes perfectly every time. She's a no-fuss type of horse early in the race, but she's a brute late. She is. She tries really hard. A mile is probably a stretch, especially here at Randwick, but um, her will to win is phenomenal and that's what gets her over the line. Well done, Thank you. There's only two kilos from top to bottom, and the light is on. We're ready to go. Red car drawn towards the outside. Racing now, red car jumped out well, so did Ballroom Bella, and they're the early leaders. Uh, Miss Hellfire's handled the start quite well, going to third, then came everyone's a star, as red car takes the lead in the first 200 metres. Over racing a little from Ballroom Bella, then everyone's a star, Miss Hellfire and Say Magique, getting a bit keen in a three-wide position. We Nessie and the goal cap down on the rails, then came Papali from Tashi White out together with Bulls, then Dalcini. Soltaire's back third, last approaching the turn from Miraview. Rain Beal and now Miss Fabergé is the last one. Red card and Ballroom Bella head and head inside the 550 from the roughy everyone's a star. Miss Hellfire wide out. We Nessie's probing through on the rails as they straighten up now. Red card under a double grip turned in front. Coming wide from Ballroom Bella the outside sticking to the task. Ballroom Bella laying it down to Red card. Two lengths away to We Nessie then everyone's a star and Miss Hellfire. Ballroom Bella moved up. Ballroom Bella took the lead but Wee Nessie is heading top gear and Wee Nessie charges up the inside and Wee Nessie will win the Sapphire won it by a length to Ballroom Bella photo for third Miss Hellfire and White Out Say Magique they beat off Red Card then came Papali from Everyone's a Star Tashi then came Miss Fabergé from Soltaire Dalcini Miraview and a gap back to Rain Beale and Wolves Ben Elam is here. We're just uh, reminiscing. The last time we caught up was around COVID times. What was that for the Golden Eagle on Thunderstruck? It was the late time Thunderstruck. Um, good to reminisce on those memories. Obviously, he's not with us, but uh, superb horse. But um, today, Wee Nessie, she put the riding on the wall first two starts this preparation. We've kept her up here the whole time. And, um, you know, she had the right form lines, Chain of Lightning, when yes. won a TJ. So, you know, she came here... Um, in good form. She's really come on with three weeks between runs and um, I couldn't have been more confident coming here, really. Well, uh, the two mix uh, set her up last year for an Arrowfield and almost redemption this year. Yeah, absolutely. We've run second in the Arrowfield two years in a row now, so uh, we need to get the better of them up here. And um, But she was she's really furnished into a proper mare now. She's... Um, you know, we're not sure what, what the future holds for her in terms of breeding or um, race on. There's still a few races in store for her, but um, I think we'll enjoy today. That was a superb win. Do you think she'll stick around here for a little longer or go uh, back home? Look, there's options. You know, you've got a Sangster, uh, which looks to be a really oh, yeah. quality field this year. and um, But then you've got five weeks until the Doom and 10,000, and she absolutely thrives on wet tracks. And um, I think you're going to get a wet track at Doom in this year with the rain they're having at the moment. So, you know, there's options for us to ponder, but, you know, the Sangster probably looks the ideal. Phillies and Mares, 1,200. Yeah. Um, but we'll just get over today. We don't make decisions on race day, and we'll enjoy this, and we'll make a decision later on. Good on you, Ben. Thank you. Well done. Ben Elam working for Mick Price and Michael Kent, Jr. Thank you. So they got it right today with Wee Nessie. She ran third in the Winona Girl, third in the birthday card. And, of course, that was behind Chain of Lightning, who went on to win the TJ Smith. And here she is, Wee Nessie, winning the Phillies and Mares Group 2 at the end of the day, the Sapphire Stakes. Her last win was in the Crockett Stakes at uh, Mooney Valley, 538 days ago, a listed race. So she adds a Group 2 to a resume. And Jamie Carr, Corey gets two today. Two today. Uh, she pick up right earlier for Jason Collett. Right place, on right Jolie, time. On Jolie Star. Right place, right time. Um, but in, the, in the Arrowfield, by the way, 
where she knocked off the Price and Penn <laughs> stable with Hedged. Yes. She, she, she's riding in terrific form um, since she's been back. Took a little while to hit her straps, but the last two or three months she's been going great guns. 315, 7 and 2, 19.04. 19.04. The trip for 1200 metres and that last 633.95. Here's Jamie. Great way to cap off a good day. Sorry, I did not hear that. I was <laughs> Great way to cap off a good day. <clears throat> yeah. Long day, uh, 10 races, winning the last definitely makes it worth it. She never looked like she was going to get beat from the 600 home. She's just push button. She's um, everyone's dream to ride. You do whatever. But she, she does whatever you want. Um, and she's talented as well, which helps. It's amazing. It's the first time she's won on a good track. Yeah, I, I can't believe that. She, she won for me two years ago, I think, and um, yeah, morning from two years ago. And it's been a long time in between drinks for her, but she's always consistent, always around the mark, but just everything was perfect for her today. The, the, the race shape was perfect. Well Thank you.